up on Pet Heroes. Luna the dog unearths a hidden danger that threatens a family of eight. And a quick-thinking cat wakes her owners up to a deadly situation. Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. You know, pets can be very protective of their human companions, but how do they warn us about dangers we can't see? Well, here are two dramatic stories of animals who go to great lengths to alert families facing invisible threats. Jenny and Ryan Conero are a young couple in charge of a bustling family. They have six kids, including five boys under the age of 14. Since moving to Edmonton 11 years ago, They've fallen in love with the city and are proud to call it home. The ninth member of their family is Luna, a husky Malamute cross. Part loner, part protector, Luna is a strong, peaceful presence. Luna is very, I would say, wolf-like in a way. She spends most of the time inside the house, but in the wintertime, she likes it outside. It's been two and a half years since Luna joined the Conroe family. Luna's owners had recently picked up a second younger dog and the two were fighting for dominance. The couple were reluctant to let either dog go, but fate helped match Luna with Jenny. Right away she just came up to me and she just looked at me and she rolled down on her back and I scratched her belly and I knew that I liked her right from the start. I knew that I wanted her and the lady that gave her to us said that she would let her go to me specifically me because our eyes matched uh, luna has one blue eye that has a brown dot in it and i have one blue eye that has a brown dot in it so she thought that that was some sort of sign that meant that she should come to us after screening people for weeks luna's owners finally saw the signs they've been looking for jenny's eyes and her chemistry with luna won her the right to take a new dog home that very day luna and i have a very strong bond we um we're like best friends. I don't know what I would do without her. According to Jenny, Luna senses when things are not right. She especially keeps an eye on Aaron, who's only three. She's even alerted me uh, before when there's been incidences that I should go out and check. Like one day he decided he was going to take eggs out of the fridge and smash them and she came right away and told me. She does things like that. She just alerts me if there's something going on that shouldn't be going on. What? Okay. And usually when I check on it, it's something that needed to be stopped. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? Okay. Let's go. In June of 2011, the Conneros learned just how sensitive and protective Luna really is. For most families, a backyard is a safe haven, the one place where kids can get outside and play without supervision. But today, Luna's safety detectors are on red alert. Something dangerous is lurking, and Luna is the only one who can sense the threat. As the skies open up and the rain starts to fall, Luna starts to dig. She's never liked the rain before, but today she's anxious to stay out in the yard. It's three o'clock in the morning when Jenny arrives home. Although it's still raining heavily, Luna is desperate to go back outside. I came home from work and it was quite late. And when I first saw Luna, she wanted to go outside. Um, normally she would just run outside and she'd go to the washroom for just a couple of minutes and then come right back in again. But this time I had to actually call her inside because it was raining so bad and I was wondering why is she not coming inside. Let's go. And when she came in she was just covered in mud. She had been digging something out there and she was looking up at me and she sort of had this look in her eyes and I knew something weird was going on and I couldn't understand why she was so dirty. And we were very tired, so although she kind of looked like she was anxious about something or trying to get across some kind of message, uh, we just sort of were too tired and we went to bed. 
As the family enjoys a peaceful night's sleep, Luna remains alert to a threat that endangers the lives of everyone inside this house. Coming up on Pet Heroes, can Luna find a way to make her humans see the invisible danger? Luna has discovered a serious threat to her family's safety right in their own backyard. She's tried to expose the problem by digging, but her humans can't see the danger. All they see is a big muddy hole. And I worked uh, early the next morning, so I had it in my mind to go and see what she had done out there, but I just didn't have time. Shortly after, I received a phone call from my husband. He had told me that Luna had dug a huge hole in the backyard, so that would explain why she was as dirty as she was when she came in. Like, I'm not doing this again, okay? What Ryan doesn't know is that Luna has detected an unusual odor rising from the earth, and her instincts for sensing danger are spot on. The smell she's uncovered is deadly natural gas. Dogs have an unbelievably advanced sense of smell. Robert Church is a director of Pets for Life and has a thorough knowledge of breed characteristics and pet behavior. Mm, no, 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 no. Human beings have about five million uh, sort of scent receptors. Uh, dogs can have up to 300 million receptors. I didn't think anything of it, really. I thought she was just having a good time. When he told me that she had dug this huge hole, he explained that there was puppy prints like all over the area, like she had continuously kept going out to inspect it throughout the day. Her prints were just everywhere. It was just, just ev everywhere around the hole. I thought, well, maybe there's a, there could be a dead animal buried deep under there, or there could be, like she's interested in something, but I don't know what. Dogs use their sense of smell much in the same way that we rely on our vision. She must have been just really digging like crazy. We noticed that the hole had partially filled up with rainwater, so there were tiny air bubbles just raising to the surface continuously. And as the bubbles surface, so does a thought. Could this possibly be a gas leak? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. really, you think so? Like, I, I just thought, gas leak here? This is absurd, you know, I, that's, that's not really possible. Andy Ponietsky is a senior officer with the hazardous materials team of the Calgary Fire Department. A natural gas leak uh, is a potentially dangerous uh, situation for us all the time, mainly because of the flammability or explosion hazard. Gas leaks that do occur underground are uh, of a particular concern for us for several reasons. One being that they are very difficult to detect and can go unnoticed for a period of time. The other problem is the, uh, the gas will actually flow along the paths underground and can come up in homes or businesses as where the gas lines actually flow. A worst case scenario for a uh, backyard gas leak would be if it was uh, a large enough leak and had gone undetected for a significant amount of time where the gas had uh, a chance to accumulate in and around a house and then if it found a source of ignition then we would definitely have a flammable and ex possible explosion hazard. Ryan and Jenny call the gas company Within 15 minutes, a technician arrives. He checks out the leak and gives the anxious couple the news. It's not good. Uh, you got a gas leak. Emergency repair crews immediately invade the Conneros' backyard. It's clear this leak is a very serious threat discovered in the nick of time. Luna is protective of her family. She's protective of her territory and I think when she smelled something weird in her territory that she perceived as some kind of a threat to her family, she wanted to get to the bottom of it and she started digging because that's one of her core strengths. And thank goodness for Luna that she had done that because she completely alerted us to this area. If it wasn't for her digging this hole, then we would not have known to even call the gas company. The gas company works all night through the rain and by the time Jenny is home from work the next day, it's hard to see any evidence of digging. Any man-made digging, that is. There is something very special about her. I can't explain it, I just know it. Luna is a husky Malamute cross, but in this case, the Malamute genes are shining through. Well, I think the, the Malamute in Luna really helped 
her to persist in making sure that her message that there was danger got through to her family. And she is just going to continue on and on and on because that's what Malamutes do. They're designed to plod on and on and on, pulling a heavy load slowly across the Arctic. Luna is a hero for what she's done. It would have gotten worse, the, the leak that is, and there could have been an evacuation, you know, and, or even worse, a disaster. I'm not sure what caused her to do the digging, if it was actually the smell, but um, I like to think that it's because she knew that there was potential danger there. She was helping us out. Personally, I do feel Luna is a hero. I feel that she went out of her way to do what she did and uh, to get across that message. And I'm glad it took us a little bit of time, but we did finally listen and check it out. And um, it's a good thing that we did. Next on Pet Heroes, an ordinary house cat leaps into action when a deadly gas threatens her owner's lives. We just saw how Luna's vigilance and persistence alerted the Conroe family to a gas leak before it turned deadly. Next, we examine the story of Winnie, a cat who puts her owner's lives ahead of her own. Kathy Kiesling lives just outside of Newcastle, Indiana, with her husband Eric and son Michael. We all live together in this ranch house, and we've lived here about five or six years, and it's pretty quiet, and it's peaceful, where I can have all my animals. I have farm cats that live in our barn. Now I've got five new ones, and love them all just like they're our babies. <laughs> All spoiled rotten. Of all the pets this family has owned, there's only one very special cat who stands out from all the rest. Winnie, my cat, was a very unique cat. She was very amazing. A day like this, over 18 years ago, Kathy discovered Winnie, less than a few hours old and abandoned by her mother. When I seen this little kitten laying by the barn, a little helpless little thing, I went and I just picked her up and I held her close to my chest. I felt a bond to her because she snuggled up to me. And when I brought her home, she became family because we took care of her. We didn't know if she was going to survive, but over the days and weeks that went by, she became part of our family. In the winter of 2007, Winnie proves just how much her family means to her. The whole week, we had got a lot of rain and a lot of the houses around us was flooded. We had between 30 and 40,000 gallons of water down here uh, when we had to flood, and we needed to get it out right now. So we had a, uh, right here in this chair, we had a pump. So how was the mall? Eric runs the pump until the basement is clear of water. He knows a gas-powered motor kicks out carbon monoxide, and that plenty of fresh air must ventilate the house. Hey, Winnie. I opened this house up completely. I had every window, every door propped wide open. I shut up everything down there around midnight, shut the house up, turned the furnace on. I had no idea that this was coming. He went around the house. He said, it looks like it's safe enough to turn the, the fans off, the doors, we need to close them. So um, we uh, went to bed that night about 11, 11.30 at night. Kathy heads to bed with Winnie close behind her. The family goes to sleep completely unaware that pockets of carbon monoxide are still trapped in the basement rafters. When the furnace kicked in later that evening, it uh, moved all the air around and uh, that air mixed with carbon monoxide got circulated through the house again, which is why the people inside the house would have received more carbon monoxide in their systems. Now it's up to Winnie to save the day. 
Carbon monoxide is impossible to detect um, by the uh, human body um, because it is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Cats don't have as powerful a sense of smell as dogs, uh, but it's about 15 times that of humans. So certainly a cat would detect an issue before we do. And again, when it's an airborne um, situation, change of environment, they are going to get concerned. And I think that she probably wanted to notify uh, her owner that, that there was a problem and, and she needed to be persistent. And that's not necessarily characteristic of cats. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and we was way in a deep sleep. And I didn't know what was going on. Someone, you know, scratching me and pulling my hair and screaming until I figured out it was Winnie trying to wake me up. It's more common for a cat to alert people to a situation like, oh, there's an emergency, my food bowl's empty. They'll be very persistent in letting you know of, of an emergency of that magnitude. Uh, I, I, different, though, for a cat to come into a bedroom, uh, you know, outside of what her routine is, and be that persistent to wake somebody up to get them out. And I think that's really commendable. When he was meowing so loud that the neighbors probably could hear her. And she was determined to get me out of that bed. And when I rolled out of bed, the first time when I stood on my feet, I felt like at that time that somebody hit me and I fell right back into the bed. And it's like, whoa. Well, when I stood up on my feet again, that's when I, the whole bedroom was spinning and I could feel this tingling from my head to my toes. And it's like I was just like in a daze. The uh, symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning uh, at low concentrations, someone feeling lightheaded or dizziness, um, then would progress uh, to uh, them feeling nauseous and eventually affecting their vision. Kathy is confused and disoriented. She tries to rouse her husband, but he's not responding. Eric. And I couldn't wake up my husband, Eric. I finally decided I'm gonna call 911. Finally, I heard them on the other line, and when I did, it's like, I don't know if it was a relief or what, but I just passed out right then. I couldn't talk on the phone. I didn't leave any message or anything. Hello? Do you have an emergency? Hello? Is there? The call came out as a person, a possible poisoning, and I was actually off-duty, headed home southbound on State Road 3 here in Henry County. Next, Kathy staggers down the hall, hoping to rescue her son, Michael. She passes out several times, but each time, Winnie is there to wake her. Every time I'd pass out, she would keep on and on, pulling my hair and meowing. Indiana State Policeman Richard Silcox was one of the first officers on the scene. I arrived here in the driveway at the Keesling residence here uh, at the same time as a Henry County Sheriff's deputy. Hello, is there anyone in there? Officer Silcox and the sheriff's deputy find the front door unlocked. When we opened the door, I knew something wasn't right because we immediately got cotton mouth, which is something that you get when you are subjected to carbon monoxide. Hearing the commotion at the door, Winnie wakes Kathy, then leads her to the kitchen. And she kept on and on until finally she got me to the kitchen and where the front door was. We could see Mrs. Kiesling in the in the living room holding a phone and she was staggering. All I remember is when they opened the door, I seen two shadows. That's when I passed out. And that's when the state trooper said that he caught me from falling on the floor. I was shaking and trembling because it was cold out. I was getting my filling back. 1040 dispatch require EMS to 2229 77th Street Southwest, 105. I'm trying to tell him that I have a husband, Eric, and my boy Michael is still in the house. The responding officers haul Eric and Kathy's son Michael out of the house before it's too late. Emergency crews quickly transport the family to a nearby hospital. They told me and my husband, my boy, that the level in your bloodstream is 30% you're dead. My husband's percent in his bloodstream was 27. My bloodstream was 17, and my boy's was 15 percent. They said if Winnie would have waited five more minutes, just five more minutes, we would all have been dead. 
After being observed overnight at the hospital, Kathy and her family return home. The family is completely unharmed from their close encounter with carbon monoxide, and they have Winnie to thank for being alive. If it not had been for the cat Winnie, there's no way we would have been there. They would have all perished in their sleep. So what an amazing animal that was to be persistent enough to know something was going on to wake her up. Four years later, after 18 years with Kathy and her family, Winnie passes away. They'll always remember her as the amazing cat that saved their lives. Winnie went above and beyond a call of duty. She, uh, she was really a, a uh, wonder cat, if you will. Um, I'm kind of surprised that she did what she did. I'm ever eternally grateful. I mean, in my eyes, Winnie was a hero. And I would tell her right now, if I had her, that I thank her for saving my life, my husband's life, and especially my boy's life. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today. None of us would. I miss her, and I wish she was still here, too. And I am so grateful to all the memories and all the time I had with her. Winnie and Luna use their heightened senses to detect deadly gas leaks. If not for their relentless efforts, the consequences could have been fatal. Fortunately for these two families, their heroic pets knew how to sound the alarm. For more information, visit cmt.ca slash pet heroes.